Hi, Ray Hayden here, and in this video, I'm going to talk about changing out a, um, a hydraulic line on my Kubota. It's the L3901, and it's the uh, LA525. I don't know if you can see that, though. <laughs> Move over. It's the LA525 uh, front end loader, and one of my hydraulic lines uh, busted right kind of right here after the uh, connection it, it just it just blew out now there's something about the uh, hydraulic lines of course they operate under pressure so for safety concerns you want to drop your front bucket to the ground you want to get your uh, implement in the back if you have one I do not have one on there currently uh, but if you have an implement on the back and the front you kind of want to get them lowered down and then let me go up here to the uh, the controller for a second and here's here's the controller arm here and basically what you can do is you push this all the way up and that's what lowers everything down if you push it all the way up that's called the um, the floating position for the uh, front end uh, loader and you can wiggle the thing around make sure everything's okay and you really want to make sure that you release any pressure on the system uh, before you start working on, on these hoses and such I'm gonna end up snatching the camera off here because I want to show you the two connections and what I did in the meantime but uh, I was out in the field work and I was rolling one of those really heavy logs that I was gonna put on the fire pit and um, boom it sounded like a gunshot it was really loud and uh, you know and, and, and the hose had started leaking and when I started moving the uh, control for the bucket um, it would shoot the uh, the uh, fluid it was just flying out so I was like well I don't want to pollute the backfield with too much uh, hydraulic fluid and I, I don't want to hurt the tractor so I figured I better stop what I'm doing with the tractor and I parked it over here close to the house so I could get the work done on it without having to um, without having to move it around too much I usually, usually put it uh, under cover and leave it there but uh, for this particular situation I wanted to make sure I had it out so let me show you what I did I'm gonna snatch the camera off the uh, tripod for a second here and let's take a look at this uh, this is the one connector right here. This one here is like a 45 degree angle, whatever. So uh, I put some aluminum foil on there to cover that up uh, for dust protection. I just want to make sure no dirt or anything got in there or bugs or anything. The other side of the connection is right here. Now I'm going to take the, I, I put aluminum foil, you can use plastic wrap, whatever you, you have available. And you put that um, on there and cover that up. So what I want to do is I don't think you necessarily see what I'm doing. Um, but basically this one connection has a 45 degree angle on it and it's got a screw and adapter and the fitting on the other side actually goes to one of these metal tubes you look down here underneath the front end loader there's some metal tubes under there I don't know how well you can see them and they go across and everything cross feeds with each other and everything else and the whole system's connected so I'm gonna put this one on first and I'll just just gonna hand tighten that make sure we're in here And on the other end, the other end's right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook that one up as well. And that's a straight shot. Now I'll be right back. I have to get a wrench to tighten this up with. Okay, I didn't wanna sit there and show you me uh, tightening up the, uh, this, the uh, nuts here on the uh, tool. But here's, here's the one connector down here. What I did is I went around the other side because joyfully, on both sides of the tractor uh, there's another hose just like this one here um, so I can make sure I have it lined up right how they have it going straight back uh, that's good and then another thing I want to do is I want to make sure that this hose is kind of not getting chewed up by anything so I want to make sure that this hose is up and out of the way and doesn't rub against anything in the operation of the tractor and uh, they usually put a you know kind of a zip line tie around there to keep it within a range of motion of the tractor now this one here's kind of got a, a big loop in it kind of thing but this tube the uh, you see the silver part of the tube here of the um, the cylinder I guess they call it like a big shock absorber uh, this particular cylinder is what pushes the boom out in a way uh, this one here is com fully compressed which is why all the fluid in the line shot out but uh, being that it's fully compressed um, this is going to have you know more space in it as this as this cylinder 
goes away and there's more of this silver you know color here showing this bulb is this you know the kind of bulb is part of the uh of the hose here is going to uh stretch out right so that's why it has to be like this so it has room to operate right this one here same thing doesn't move as far doesn't move as far so it doesn't need as much extra space in the hose but this one here does and uh, i'll just tie a zip line around that then maybe I'll show you that. I'll stop the video and I'll go get a zip line. I'll put that around there and show you what it looks like. Uh, and then I'll, the other the last thing to do is to check the uh, fluid. Now I'll talk about the fluid here in a minute as well. Um, but hang on for that and uh, let me get the uh, zip line or the zip line, the zip tie, and I will get the, and it stays on loose. You know, it doesn't have to be real tight or anything. And then, um, uh, you know, I'll show you the thing about the, uh, the hydraulic fluid. All right, so stand by for that. Okay, so I, I put my zip tie on there. My zip ties are not that long and they won't, they, you know, one zip tie won't do it. So what I did is, if you can see the other side here, I have, you know, basically I used two zip ties, zip tied the zip ties together, you know, and then I wrapped it around there. This is actually the only hose on the other side of the uh, tractor that's, that's zip tied and it is zip tied, um, it is tied pretty tight. It's, it's close to this one here. Because this is where you want the motion to be over on this part of the hose as that thing extends out when this pushes. This side of the hose, really, you just want to keep it here so it doesn't get in the way of anything that you might be working with. Any material or rubbing up against a tractor, you don't want any rubbing and friction to go on because that's not going to work out well on the back end. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, hydraulic fluid. I'll come right back with that. Okay, so let's talk about the transmission, not the, tr well, yeah, transmission fluid. Let's talk about the hydraulic fluid. It just so happens that it is um it's it's called it's a, it's got a name to it here i'm trying to figure out oh, there we go it's on the front there so it says uh and it, this really gives it away too it says udt2 right but it's super universal trans dash hydraulic fluid so trans hydraulic it's transmission and hydraulic fluid all in one now, this is a name brand with kubota and the manual actually tells me it's a proprietary blend of the fluid and everything. And you know what? You know, to make sure we're good on the warranty and everything with it and the guarantees and everything and the, you know, customer service with the Kubota tractor, you know, I'm going to go ahead and use the stuff that they tell me to use on it. And it's a pretty easy process. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. There is a transmission hydraulic fluid uh, checker right here. So, you know, I pull this out and I look at it and uh, it looks like it's a little bit higher than the low mark so and and you know you know seriously i shot transmission fluid out through the through the hydraulic hose so we're going to need to fill that up so in order to do that we come around to the back of the tractor which is kind of neat I mean, it's really easy to do this this red cap right here says oil that's for the transmission fluid right there all i have to do now i, I did loosen it up and i was able to do it by hand and it's got a it's got a pretty big hole there but you know what you know way back in there there's just no way you're going to sit there and hold a gallon of fluid and pour it in that hole and not make one big mess so you need a funnel of some sort that's a good spot for that as a matter of fact i really want to focus you know how i'm i'm, I'm definitely afraid of electricity and stuff like that and i really don't want to you know when i mess with the fire when i'm dealing with the fire pit over there i don't really film or record myself dealing with the fire pit set starting the fire or actively managing the fire because I want to focus on the dangerous stuff. As you can see with all the holes of my shirts, I get real close to the fire. Embers hit me, they burn things up. Also notice while I'm talking about this hydraulic stuff that I went ahead and I'm wearing the eye protection. I'm not wearing gloves. And the reason why is because I need to have that tactile feel for what I'm doing. And if this stuff gets all over my gloves, it's just gonna ruin the gloves anyway. So you know, why deal with that? Uh, so, uh, but basically there's nothing I had to do. I just put the line back on. So I removed my dust protection uh, on, on either ends of the connectors and then I put the hose on and then with my wrench, now it, it'd be nice to have the actual wrench rather than an adjustable wrench like this, uh, but this is what I have. I don't have the individual wrench set kind of stuff because I really honestly have never needed them uh, for any of the things that I do around the house or whatever. And, uh, but it would have been nice to have just a wrench, but you know what, the, the, this wrench here worked, this adjustable wrench, or channel lock or whatever this worked just fine to get the job done for me so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to turn the camera off i'm going to focus on getting the fluid in there without making a mess on my property and then i'll come back and wrap this up so hang on for that 
Okay, so I went ahead and uh, replaced the hose. I uh, checked the, uh, the engine oil, of course, check the engine oil every day. Check the uh, transmission hydraulic fluid reservoir. And then uh, I needed to add some fluid. Well, I mean, fluid came flying out of the hose. So I was going to have to add some fluid. I uh, added the fluid and I, you know, add some, check it, add some more, check it, let everything settle down. It's a pretty level area out there uh, on the grass. So that was good for that. And then um, when I saw that it was at a pretty good level, I shut everything, you know, I, I closed up the uh, back reservoir, put that cap on there, closed that up. I checked the oil, uh, the, the hydraulic fluid up here on this hump. And then I ran the engine, let the system charge up, get the uh, fluid flowing through the system and all that. Because apparently it just, you know, pumps it all through and all that. I, I operated the boom up and down, tilted the bucket uh, up and down, and got everything uh, running through the uh, different paces and checked for oil leaks or anything the, uh, from the hydraulic hose. And uh, everything looks great. It, lo it looked like it was a very, very simple repair for somebody who's never done anything quite like that before. Um, so I was very happy with it. Now again, I want to mention this particular tractor because it, the location of things may be slightly different from one tractor to another, even in the same series. This is a Kubota L3901 tractor and it has the transmission fluid on the middle pedestal. And, and, and I also want to mention this is the HST. This is the hydrostatic transmission or the automatic transmission version. So it has a transmission uh, check right there in front of the uh, operator seat in the pedestal by your feet. Uh, and that's where you check that at. And then uh, the reservoir to fill it is in the back. It has a nice big red cap on it. And, uh, and, and it was able, was able to loosen it up by finger. I didn't need any tool or wrench or anything to get that off. And uh, finger tight on the way back. Uh, the, uh, the hydraulic line was easy to install. Uh, it actually has you know kind of an angled uh fitting on it so you plug it in you know kind of plug it in that way and tighten it you know hold the hold the hose take the pressure off the fixture while you're tightening up the nut same thing on the other end which is a straight connection uh which also had a, a fitting uh a, a special design to the fitting on that so everything just went together very very well and i was very happy with it again this is the l3901 hst automatic transmission version diesel engine the uh hydrostatic uh, the uh, hydraulic line was for the front end loader and it's the LA525 Maybe sure I should get that in there the LA525 version of the front end loader Which should be the one matched for this particular tractor and um, And everything went well, so make sure you drop that comment below Let me know you came by to say hi give me a thumbs up like the video if you enjoyed it Hope you did and if you haven't already done so uh, hit that subscribe button join the channel I greatly appreciate the growth on the network until I catch you in the next video Take care and be well.